Finland. Britain has the largest tax code in the Western world. We stand to be the only country in the West to head into a recession. The Chancellor claims that we have potentially the worst economy for 60 years. That's worse than devaluation, worse than the winter of discontent, and even worse than the ERO. Businesses flee the country to lower taxing and lightly regulated nations. We hear too often sad anecdotes of British people fed up with the laws and state of our country, going abroad, leaving their homeland. And who can blame them when we look at the sad, pathetic record of this government? Pensioners are dragged through the courts because they simply can't pay soaring council tax. HMRC loses millions of private individuals' data. ID cards threaten to turn this country into a database state. And this government stands morally bankrupt are having doubled the income tax rate on Britain's lowest pay. Shame. Our economy is broken and our government too powerful. Our politics is suffering from the middle way nothingness of stealth taxes, bigger government and worse services. Our country has been stuck with a redundant consensus for too long. That establishment belief that only government knows what's best for you, how to spend your money. Conference, the Taxpayers Alliance is here to break that consensus defeated and held in a new wave where you keep more of what you earn, that the British people can live in freedom and the government once again becomes the servants of the people and not the masters. Yeah. We not only put the economic case for lower taxes, we also put the moral case. We want politicians to stop interfering with public service delivery and let civil society take a bigger role. The government spends 45% of what we all earn, and yet it directs education, health and welfare policy. As a result, our children leave school unable to read. The NHS has the worst mortality rate amenable to healthcare in Western Europe, and individuals find it easier to claim benefit rather than seek work. Conference simply put, our case is that the British people know how to spend their money better than, than the government does. Since 2004, we've been campaigning for research and grassroots activism to expose the unnecessary wastefulness of high taxes and big government. From councils to the European Union, we are watching what every single tier of government does. When they waste our money, our activist army of almost 20,000 grassroots supporters write, call and lobby the politicians demanding for change. We want to be in a position where the government can't even scratch its nose without the TPA watching them. Every penny they take and every decision they make, we will be the ones watching them because it's our money, not the government's. Yeah, yeah. We're entering a new politics. Trust in political parties has been dealt a hammer blow as everyone in this country looked on in horror as parliamentary expenses were grossly abused. We've been fed the belief that our money goes to services for the benefit of all. What I'm here to tell you today, and a fact I think you all know, is that we've been fed a myth reinforced by half-truths designed to increase the size of government and political interference in our lives. Our taxes have gone up and yet we still have dirty hospitals, police unable to combat crime, and our soldiers, our brave soldiers in the front line of the war on terror, sent to Iraq and Afghanistan without the proper kit. <laughs> But yet, the government still found £2.3 billion to refurbish the MOD offices in London. That shows the disgusting priorities of Gordon Brown and Tony Blair's shameful record in office. The decisions are made by those who turn up. British people are indeed interested in politics, not the current crop of politicians. That's why we, we pioneer grassroots activism, showing how those interested in politics can make a difference. We're driving the issue of lower taxes, not pushing for political careers aboard the gravy train. From all parties and none, our ranks are growing and our activist army is holding national and local politicians to account. For instance, who would have thought that local councils would be using anti-terrorist legislation to spy on local taxpayers walking their dogs and taking their children to school? Since Paul Council used the Regulations of Investigatory Powers Act to spy on a family for two weeks, well, having just committed the crime 
of trying to get around school catchment areas. Other councils up and down the country have used every means possible to curtail our freedom. In Hull, a mother was fined when her daughter dropped a few sausage roll crumbs that fell on the floor and they were eaten by a seagull. <laughs> In Peterborough, council fine wardens are given commission-based pay depending on how many fines they hand out. Eastleigh Council now wants to pay local taxpayers to snoop and spy on their neighbours just to monitor local environmental activity. The image of local government being an authority to clean the bins, to sweep the streets, fix the lights and mow the parks is now long gone. Now with an Orwellian seal, we're being monitored by councils. Forgive me for asking a rhetorical question, but when did public service turn into public surveillance? We're viewed by local government as their endless pot of money here to fund every sort of extravagance. Whether it's council jollies or part of town twinning with far and away places, or the endless beam of non-jobs used to pack town halls with even more meddlers and bureaucrats, they talk you pay. Just as they use our money to watch what we do, they're burning our money day in and day out, cramming town halls with even more bureaucrats. Every week, I have the privilege to go through the Guardian jobs pages <laughs> to find out exactly what non-jobs we're paying for. I thought last year's were bad, some of the examples being NHS directors of equality and diversity costing you £85,000 per position. It just shows that this government wants to spend your money on spin doctors instead of real doctors. Heads of Europe at development agencies, £55,000 a year just to get on a plane. If only there was one way. <laughs> and a community empowerment network program manager at Thorough Council Cost taxpayers £30,000, and for the life of me, I still be, haven't managed to figure out what the job actually involves. <laughs> this year's non jobs have been no exception, sadly. Some of the bizarre positions you can apply for in local government include a job as a family intervention project key worker at Southern Council, where you earn £27,000 a year to, and I quote, intensively support families at risk of losing their housing tenancies through antisocial behaviour. <laughs> so much for government supporting the victims of antisocial behaviour. There is, in Moray Council, a street football coordinator, earning £20,000 a year. Now, who ever needed the local government officer to set up jumpers for goalposts? <laughs> Finally, Braintree Council put public money to an unbelievable use by taking out a blank advert just to show how green they are. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the tip of the iceberg. You can find more non-jobs every week on our website, www.taxpayersalliance.com.